We all love a good underdog story, where a predicted loser goes against the top dog fueled by sheer passion and fire for success and ends up beating the top dog opponent, just like the character Rocky Balboa in the movie Rocky. In a lot of sense, Yamaha's RD350 has a lot in common with the character Rocky Balboa. Because in the 1973 Daytona 200 road racing series, many quote-unquote superbikes got their ass handed to them by this little two-stroke machine. At the time of its introduction in 1973, the racing scene was dominated by the big 750cc superbikes by British and Japanese manufacturers. But when Yamaha entered the scene with their little two-stroke twins, everyone was surprised. The performance of these little 350cc twins shook up a lot of superbike riders who rode this machine for the first time. During the 60s, racing wasn't all that accessible to the general public. It was expensive like always, but the bigger issue was getting the proper spare parts for your racing machines. In order to get the special parts for your racing machine, you had to have a good relationship with that special somebody at your dealership. And it was Yamaha that bucked that trend. They offered the general public the motorcycles that were quite capable on the track. The dealerships provided full support in the form of parts and services. It all started with the YR1, a 348cc two-stroke parallel twin, launched in 1967. In the 1968 Daytona 200, the YR1 riders Yvonne Duhamel and Art Bauman finished second and third behind Calvin Rayborn's new tech flathead Harley KR750. This was the beginning of the onslaught of the four-stroke motorcycles which lasted until 1985. In 1969, Yamaha launched the TR2350, a true production racer, which you can buy from the dealership and go straight to the track. It was during this time Yamaha started to play with the idea of modular engines, where they horizontally split the crankcase. This allowed them to speed up assembly and cut costs by allowing the crank both gear shafts and kick start shaft to be set into the upper case. The R5 was the first road legal motorcycle from Yamaha to feature a modular engine with a piston port intake system. This engine was then carried over to the RD350, but there were some major upgrades like the six speed gearbox and reed valve technology. It's a 347.4 cc two stroke parallel twin air cooled engine making about 40 bhp a 4 bhp increase from the R5. On paper that might not sound a lot, but it made a huge difference in the real world performance of the bike. The engine also featured Yamaha's auto lube technology. It uses a plunger pump that operates in synchronization with the crankshaft to pump the engine oil, and the stroke volume of the pump or otherwise known as discharge volume is varied according to the throttle opening, thereby removing the need for pre-mixing of the oil and fuel. During this time, it was the big bikes from Honda and BSA that were dominating the races. But that domination came to a screeching halt when the modified little 350 Yamahas based on the RD platform snatched all the top places. People were in a state of shock. They couldn't understand how such tiny little motorcycles could possibly outrun motorcycles with more than twice the engine capacity. Because back in the 70s, it was widely believed that the solution for going faster is to have more engine capacity and to make more power. Yamaha challenged that notion by making a motorcycle with not only a great engine but also with excellent components like a competent chassis, really strong brakes and a basic but well-engineered suspension system. To top it all off, the RD350 was incredibly light, 154 kilograms or 340 pounds fully fueled ready to ride which is about 10 kilograms or 22 pounds lighter than its competitor, the Honda CB350. But don't expect the little RD to beat those big bikes in a straight line because it simply won't. What made it special is, unlike many of its main competitors and even the big 750s, it wasn't just a one-trick pony. Instead, it was the best sport bike package that you could buy at that time, which puts the RD in a class of its own. It has plenty of torque down low, it goes around the corner better than anything else and stops faster and better than anything else. In fact, here's what Cycle Magazine said about the handling and braking performance of RD350. The bike can burn through switchbacks and carve around sweepers like few in its displacement class and few in any other class. The little 350 generates enough decelerative force to jerk your eyeballs out, and it does it without a lot of liver pressure. After the introduction in 1973, the RD350 remained relatively unchanged until 1976 
when Yamaha announced the launch of the RD400, an upgraded and more civilized version of the RD350. With 8mm more stroke, the RD400 engine displays 399cc. In the RD400, the engine was moved 20mm forward in order to mitigate the wheelie prone nature of the RD350. The RD400 also had some nifty features like alloy wheels, rear disc brake, etc. But despite having more power and features than its predecessor, the RD350 still remains the favorite among the RD lineup. Unfortunately, despite being a great motorcycle, the RD350 had a relatively short lifespan. Just after six years of its introduction, in 1979, Yamaha ceased the production of the RD series of motorcycles due to the ever-increasing emission restrictions on two-stroke engines. But in an interesting turn of events, the Escorts Group in India manufactured a licensed version of the RD350, known as Rajdut 350, from 1983 to 1990. However, unlike the RD350's success in the Indian market, the Rajdut 350 didn't achieve similar results. This was partly attributed to its high purchase price and relatively poor fuel efficiency. Nonetheless, the production of Rajdut Yamaha bikes in India paved the way for the reputation as performance motorcycles. The Rajdut 350 came in two variants, the high torque which produced 30.5 bhp as opposed to Yamaha RD350's 39 bhp at the crankshaft and the later low torque which had further detuned engine, resulting in only 27 bhp output but better fuel economy. As the time went on, the production of the Rajdut 350 became almost entirely sourced in India, with minimal reliance on Japanese parts. In 1990, the manufacturing of this motorcycle came to an end as the sales plummeted due to the Indian market's increasing focus on the fuel economy. With that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Or if you loved it, please consider subscribing to the channel. See you guys next time. Ride safe.